Welcome to this week's webinar and a service that has changed our business, which is Skewdrop. Now, many of you heard it through Jamie and Michael in the Endgame Network and Southern Seller Fest. And I spoke at Southern Seller Fest how to get free inventory financing, which was not really about financing, but improving your supply chain so you didn't need financing, so the business would finance it itself. I didn't know at the time, but Jamie and Michael were about to launch Skewdrop and their service fitted exactly where I was saying. So people are always concentrating on the prices, you know, oh, the storage is cheaper or my freight forward is cheaper. But what people forget is the time and they're saving cups of coffee here and there and they forget that they are saving, they're holding hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of inventory. Now, most of you have probably got $100,000 worth of inventory, many 500 and some millions of dollars worth of inventory. And I get calls from people all the time asking my recommendations for finance. I'm, business is growing and I need finance. You know? Where are we going to get? We need some money for the next order. And they're trying to borrow money on an inefficient business model. They think that they'll be able to pay it back in three months, but they won't. They'll basically have that debt forever in their business because their business is inefficient. What I'm going to show you today is you don't need that finance. You already have that money, but you're just not using it properly. So we were one of the first people to use Skewdrop and a lot of these things. I like to use it myself and see what the results are um, before I recommend it to anyone. And... Uh, we were one of the first to use it in November. We had a bit of a slow start using it because of the inventory Amazon the Amazon inventory restrictions, but now we've sent over 30 uh, cubic metres of stock through, and today I'm just going to put everything in cubic metres, so you'll have to work out how that works for you in terms of your price per unit, but I thought cubic metres is a good way to start. So we've sent 30 cubic metres through Skewdrop, uh, over 42 shipments, so we've got some pretty good data on both costs and timing. So how does it change our business? Well, the big one is we're going to halve the amount of inventory that we need to service the same amount of sales. We've increased our profit margins by reducing our storage costs and inbound shipping fees, and we've become more flexible. So what is Skewdrop? So basically, it's a storage facility, and I grabbed this from um, Skewdrop's main page because it basically summarised it pretty well. It's a storage facility in, in, in China that enables you to ship directly, so they take care of the freight forwarding, directly into Amazon cost-effectively. Plus, it's got some great software the tracks your inventory levels, connects up to the Amazon API, makes things really easy. I'll show you how easy it is in a bit. So let's talk about our old system first. And probably a lot of you were doing something similar. So our old system was we'd order quarterly from the manufacturer, basically to get some volume discounts, but mainly to fill the container so that we can end up with some decent prices there because the LCL rates were kind of getting expensive along the way. So we'd contact our freight forwarder to get prices on the container, back and forward a couple few days. The freight forwarder would then book a, book a shipment, a bit, book a container. That container would be sent to a 3PL in California because we couldn't send in you know, 63 cubic metres into Amazon uh, because they just didn't allow us to have that type of storage. We would then send the inventory from the 3PL into Amazon subject to the capacity limits. It wasn't very good. Partly we did that because that was the way it was done. Um, that was the most efficient way that we could see doing it, but it had some real problems. The first problem was we had this large cash outlay. So a full container for us, the product costs were about $75,000 US. The freight costs would be between $12,000 and $30,000 um, for a container. It's a bit less than that now for a, a full container, but that was it at the time. But still, it was $75,000 US, you know, $110,000 Aussie just for the products. And then part of the thing is we had to guess what our sales would be in four to six months. 
So it's we're kind of looking a long way in advance as to what our products are. Yeah, you know, okay, when you've got one or two products, but when you've got 20, it becomes slightly more difficult. So what we would end up is because we're looking a bit far out, we'd say, oh, this is what we're going to send, but we're going to, because the time delays are so long, we'll send some a bit longer. Um, so we'll send a little bit more um, just to, in case it goes really well type thing. So we end up in overstocked in some items and understocked in others because trying to predict our sales four to six months out was really difficult. That affected because we had some overstocked items in Amazon that affect our inventory limits. Um, and so we couldn't get product in that was selling, so we lost sales. We also had high Amazon storage costs. Due to the having to use a full container, we had to use a 3PL and there was additional time delays in that. The 3PL actually you know, receiving the stock and getting it ready so we could actually send it out from there. And these additional extra costs in storage and the really quite expensive one is that inbound shipping fee from Amazon. You know, sending it from California to California was actually pretty expensive. So we ended up with too much inventory, too much money held in inventory. We ended up with the wrong mix of inventory because we we're looking too far out. And the Amazon inventory limits were killing us. So we had, you know, if you could look at a number of ways, I forget the numbers now, we are now down to 45, 42 days worth of stock in the Amazon. And it's pretty much still got a little bit of balancing to do there, but it's pretty much clear before we would have had 80 to 100. And Amazon just won't let us send in enough stock. So the new system with SKUDROP, we now manufacture monthly. So rather than looking at what the sales are expected to be in, um, in four to six months, we're saying what our sales are expected to be in three to four months' time. Much easier to predict. We're shipping to Amazon weekly. Um, so based on, we basically keep 40 days, 40, we aim to keep 42 days of stock in Amazon FBAs. And that's kind of what we've found to be the optimal level of inventory so that the inventory was spread amongst as many different FBA warehouses and it was order now, get it tomorrow type thing, um, which improved your conversion rates and sales. Um, so the formula that we use to send in how much we send in each week is based on our current sales level for the week, our units in Amazon, and the units in transit and the expected sales in six weeks. In essence, it comes down to if your sales are stable, we're just going to be sending in what we sold last week. So our object, and this is what we're getting to, is we have got to this now, 42 days in Amazon, 42 days in shipment. Almost all of our stock now, we're almost cleared out of our uh, Californian warehouse. All of our stock is now held, almost all, in China in that warehouse. And later on, that will become, when that skew drop starts selling to Europe, et cetera, that will become a really, uh, a really beneficial thing, just having all our stock in one place. I'll deal with that a bit more in a sec. So the benefits of the new system, well, we've got a reduced level of inventory. Now, it has dropped by, by 35%. We've still got a little bit of old system and a bit of overstock in a couple of areas that we had. So um, basically, we expect to get, to get down to about 50% of our existing levels of inventory. So we used to have $500,000 worth of inventory to service the USA. Now we're going to only need $250,000 worth of inventory to service the same level of sales. So our inventory levels are returning to balance. So because we've got better systems as to forecasting inventory, forecasting sales, and how much inventory we've got, um, we're able to, you know, we're in balance. We're not overstocked, understocked. I mean, some of the smaller products we may have to do a little bit bigger production run just to get minimum water quantities and things, but otherwise pretty good. Our production runs, 
So our manufacturing now costs $25,000. They used to cost 75. So that basically equals one fortnightly payment from Amazon. So I've got one fortnightly payment, which covers the inventory, and I've got another one spare for things. We have lower risk. I'll deal with the risk in a sec, but there's lower risk because we haven't got as many things. There's, we are not haven't got that concentration risk. I'll deal with that in a sec. The cost of sending one carton to Amazon is the same as sending one container. So that's on a per carton basis. But basically, the costs per unit of us sending just one container, one carton to Amazon through SKUdrop are the same as sending a full container from China to the US through the 3PL and out. We'll deal with that in a sec. We've also got less steps in our supply chain because we haven't got, we're basically sending it from our manufacturer to SKUdrop and then straight into Amazon. Um, so it gets picked up and put down less times. And it's simple and there's less time in admin. I'll deal with that in a sec. So let's deal with the prices. I had a look. These are our prices. Um, this is what we got charged in August. So August 22, we sent a container into Amazon, into R3PL. The container's cost at the time were three and a half, were $8,000. That's probably come down to four and a half thousand now, maybe a bit cheaper. Um, the freight costs ex duty um, were uh, three thousand nine hundred. Three PL unloading fee and packing, and then the monthly fee from the um, from the three PL plus storage was two thousand two hundred. So fifteen thousand um, dollars, sixty three cubic meters to a container. So the cost per cubic meter was 241. I then had a look at my Amazon inbound shipping fees. They were $138 per cubic meter. So the total cost on these August figures was $379 per cubic meter. The current costs, we haven't sent it, but it's going to be around 323. That could be a bit cheaper. My current costs in SKUdrop are 294. I'll deal with the, that in a sec. So this is our SKUdrop costs from when we sent it in our first ones. It was kind of expensive then anyway. We uh it was $500 a um just about $500 a cubic meter, came down a bit in December to just over 300 jumped up a bit in January because we were running out of some sock and I sent some products by fast boat. So SKUdrop gives you the option to send the products by slow boat, medium boat, fast boat, and various options to, um, uh, they've also got an air freight option. Um, so basically I tried a few just sending them fast boats. Since then, I've just been using the cheapest option, um, which is now down to $294. Um, and I saw one of them was down to $170 per cubic meter. So it's really starting to come down. So pricing, kind of all the same. Let's look at the transit times. So China into the Californian 3PL, and this is when we did it last, um, took 50 days. So it was basically 44 days in shipping time and four days, six days to get unpacked at 3PL into their you know, pallet racking and ready to send out. Then California, basically California to California and Nevada, um, was taking 44 days took 45 days in quarter four, it's now down to 20 days. Okay, but still, it's California to California. Basically, the issue is, are oh, UPS going to come and pick up the product? Also, dealing with the 3PL, we send it, let's say now, we get an answer back. You know, they don't pick up, they don't get the email till tomorrow, a couple of days to pack it, to put it together, three, you know, gets lost in the system. So basically, it's taking 28, uh, 20 days. 
SKU drop, the first ones we sent out were taking 57 days, a bit slower. The re most recent ones we're doing, we've had a look at, this is Amazon to, this is from the time I created it in SKU drop to the time it is fully received in Amazon is taking 42 days. So, and that's using the slow boat. So really um, quite comparable. I'm 70 days to 42. So it's now just faster to get that product into Amazon. So the other pro problem we had is actually getting those, you know, um, from 3PL into Amazon. And it was, we've still got a bit there. It's still a bit of a pain. We log on to Seller Central and we then create um, a shipping plan. We agree to the inbound shipping fees from Amazon. We generate the labels. We download them. We download a CSV file of all our products and cartons and units. And we email that to the um, 3PL with the labels and the list of products we want to do. 3PL confirms the order the next day. UPX picks up the carton sometime. Now, yesterday, because we do all our uh, products on the basis, um, every Monday we just look at what stock we've got to send in. I think created a little video. Hopefully it'll work. So this is the actual process we had for sending the product into Amazon. I'm going to play the video. It's very quick. Hopefully it'll all work. So what we've got is this is the uh, the, the dashboard in SKUdrop, and what we're going to do, so it says number of products we've got here, we're just going to send products to Amazon, and it says available cartons, and we just put in how many cartons. So we're going to send 117 cartons of that one, uh, two of another, and four of this one down the bottom here. So we're sending in uh, 23 cartons create shipping plan within Seller Central. So it creates a shipping plan in Seller Central. Dun, dun, dun. Wait a sec. It's just, it's talking to Amazon at this point. It then says, this is where it's all sending it to. We hit calculate shipping estimate. It then gives you a series of prices um, based on time, various things. Um, you can go fast boat, super quick, etc. I usually just do the lowest to highest price. Um, so we're at $451. This is regular UPS and truck. Um, they don't come in at the same time. Usually click that one. It's cheap so I don't need to get them in because our system's set up now. The most expensive, if you're in a hurry, 963, kind of double the price. Great shipping plan, estimate labels. And that's it. That's done. I don't have to do anything else. So it ends up being much faster to get your product into Amazon. Okay. So... That, that process, that was live. Well, it was kind of did it. I took out a few seconds of things, but it basically took me two minutes to do. Done. Fully done, two minutes. Shipping plans, product on its way to Amazon. They will give you then a advice that your product's been shipped, you've brought, it's got labels on, it's on its way. They'll then put tracking codes on at a later point when they get, when the product arrives in um thing. Really Simple system. I did. They've got an air freight option uh, as well if you want to get them there super quick. So we mucked up something. And one of our products sold really quickly. Um, we did send like two cases, a couple of cases via air freight, a couple by fast boat, just and then the rest by slow boat type thing, um, just to get that product back in. Okay, so let's look at the risk. We've got a freight risk. So all your Inventories in one container on one ship. You know, your sales for the next three months. If something happens to that ship, delays, customs audit, numerous things, um, then your sales are really stuffed. Now, we everyone kind of had that during COVID. 
Um, so there's a freight risk there. Um, with in our situation now, we've got basically, you yeah, know, we've got six weeks of product on six different ships in six, you know, six different containers all going in at different times. Um, there's a forecasting risk. Well, what are your sales going to be in four to six months out? Uh, it's really difficult to tell. Um, if your sales drop or you, they aren't quite as what you expected, then you're really stuck with too much inventory, especially it ends up being expensive, especially when you're stuck in the Amazon trying to fix it. Product risk. Your product has a defect and you've, got to, you've sent everything all the way to the USA. Now, how do you get it fixed? It's too expensive to, to ship back to Amazon, to China and get it remedied. Well, if you're all your products in China and you've got good relationships with your suppliers, which you should, you can say to them, oh, this is a problem. We need to get this fixed, whether they need to fix it or you need to fix it. But it's only to get all your product back to the manufacturer. It's only a couple of hundred dollars. I, we're reasonably close to um, the skew drop warehouses in Yiwu. We're reasonably close to it. It costs about $450 which is what my supplier charged, so maybe even less, but $450 to send uh, basically a full container worth of product from um, where a supplier is south of uh, China, south of Shanghai to Yiwu. It doesn't cost that much to send you know, products within China. And then you've got this financing risk. You've got this payment of big lumps, big production costs, your freight costs up front. So we've just made that much simpler and reduced all that risk. So we're no longer sitting with all this stock. Yeah. Oh my goodness, my stock's been held up. I haven't got any sales. Yeah. We've we've diversified all these things. So the real benefits, time. We've sped up the supply chain. Yeah, we're turning over our inventory faster. We've lowered our inventory. So we've got a 35% decrease in inventory after four months. It's going to be 50% after six. And the reason being is we're still switching from some stock that we held. We've got in a Californian 3PL, got some overstock there. We're just moving that out. Um, when they do, they're looking at uh, having the same facility available for shipping to Europe. And that will be a game changer because then you will be able to set, have one central base of stock and then send stock all around the world to wherever it needs to be. And you won't have to have like a whole bunch of stock sitting in Canada or Germany, not selling. You just send what you need for that particular time. Um, the flexibility, manufacturing monthly enables us to match supply and demand. Demand. So if we've got a product that is um, selling really quickly, well, we can catch up with the next month. Well, we do need to make some more of that this month. So we, because we've got that flexibility there, our costs, they're comparable to sending a full container, even if we're sending just two cartons, which was impossible to do beforehand. Um, the Amazon storage limits, We've now got more capacity or the same capacity, but we're using less. So our Amazon capacity at the moment, we're only using half. I don't know what other people have got there, but we've got, you know, we can double our inventory levels. Um, we can double our sales um, and we'll still be fine. Um, so that's that's fantastic. If we double the size, we'll even get more inventory level. So we've got just that more capacity base there. Um, the risk, we've now got freight in six ships over three weeks, over three, over six weeks, not three months of stock in one ship. Our cash flow smoothed out. We've got more available cash and we've got less tie, cash tied up in inventory. When we look at this 50% in decrease in inventory from 500,000 to 250, that's just cash available. It wasn't there before and now it is. So you can do that with you want, you know, pay yourself salaries, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we become more cash capital efficient. We can grow faster. We don't need to borrow. We haven't needed to borrow in our business at all anyway, but 
we could substantially increase in size and uh, we wouldn't need to borrow. Okay. They've given me a code in SKUDROP, our uh, affiliate code. If you use SKUDROP DB, in, if you've got a SKUDROP account or when you set one up, um, if you put that affiliate code in there, you will get free subscription, which is about $9, $10 a month US. Um, so you get free for that for a year. So just if you've already got an account, you can just drop that code in there and you'll get um, free subscription to SKUDROP for the next uh, year. Okay, questions. I kept it to half an hour. That was my new object: is to keep the um, keep these webinars to half an hour, just so you don't need to listen to me for hours on no, an hour and in. So now we've got question question and answer time. <laughs>